The Reapers were never meant to fight us. They were meant to end us. Their greatest weapon is not their numbers, nor their near immortality, nor even their impossible intelligence. It's a single lance of molten metal, fired at a fraction of the speed of light, a weapon so powerful that even the games can't show the true scale of its devastation. Every cycle ends the same way. A shadow rises from dark space, and with a single incandescent stroke, an entire civilization falls silent. The Reapers call it efficiency. We call it annihilation. Their main cannon is the instrument of that silence. A relativistic spear of metal so powerful that even our most desperate resistance was little more than vapor before it. In this video, we're going to peel back the horror, decode the physics, and truly understand what happens when a reaper takes aim. Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00. It's a cool coat, isn't it? So the Reaper's primary armament is the Magnetohydrodynamic Cannon, a spinal-mounted weapon that fires a stream of molten metal at a fraction the speed of light. This is relatively basic information that doesn't give us a lot to go on, so with the aim of this video being to calculate the actual destructive capability of this weapon, then we need to look into some specifics. We can gain vital information from the codex as well as what we see in-game during cutscenes. We need to understand the characteristics of this weapon. Now, At face value, during cutscenes we see this eerie, red glowing sustained beam joined by an aggressive buzzing auditory sound. We'll politely skip the whole sounds travelling in a vacuum of space argument. By taking this cutscene, finding the instant a beam appears and timing it until it disappears, we can deduce that these main guns fire a sustained beam for nearly precisely one second. But that's only a small piece of the puzzle. We need to find the velocity and materials of this beam to really start making headway. Now it's difficult to nail this down specifically, but on the subject of velocity, the arbitrary fraction of the speed of light quote is just not enough. But if we use the same 1.3% of the speed of light that the Alliance vessels fire their main guns at, and factor in the duration of the streams being one second a shot, we then have yet another piece of the puzzle. Next, we can begin to calculate the mass of the stream based on its materials and dimensions. But we're still missing another crucial dimension, the thickness of the beam. Apparently, according to the Codex, the maximum bore of these types of cannons is 5,500mm, with it being quoted that the larger ones are the ones on Reaper capital ships, and the smaller ones are the reverse-engineered versions that were installed on human and Turian battleships during Mass Effect 3, with the smallest being the variant aboard the Normandy. Assuming the entirety of the beams we see is the stream of molten metal, over the course of one second at 1.3% C, 3,897.3 kilometers of molten metal is ejected in a beam around 5.5 meters in diameter. Now we have most of the critical information. Next, we need to know the materials we're dealing with. The molten metal in question is a slurry of iron, uranium, and tungsten. Now we don't know the very specific alloy of these materials and in what quantity, so we're going to have to assume equal parts of all three alloys, and that will give us an average assumed mass. So we're being very conservative in our estimations here because uranium and tungsten, being two-thirds of this concoction, are strikingly denser than iron. In fact, both are over twice the density of iron. The material density of iron is 7,870 kilograms per cubic meter, uranium is 19,100 kilograms, and tungsten is 19,250 kilograms per cubic meter. Adding these together and dividing by three gives us an average of 15,400 kilograms per cubic meter. 
Now to calculate the actual mass being fired by using this density multiplied by the volume of the beam being fired. Now we know the bore of the weapon is 5,500 millimeters and fires a sustained one second beam at 1.3% C, which equals 3,897 kilometers. So we need to find out the volume of a cylinder that is 5,500 millimeters in diameter and 3,897 kilometers in length, which happens to be 9.26 times 10 to the power of seven cubic meters. So now we have a mass of 15,400 kilograms per cubic meter and a cylindrical volume of 92,600,000 cubic meters. Multiplying these together gives us a total mass being fired of 1.4 billion tons of molten metal. Now we're already probably seeing the problem here. That means that every single time a Reaper fires its gun it is shedding 1.4 billion tons of mass. A reaper can fire its guns once every five seconds and it ultimately means it needs to physically contain billions upon billions of tons of molten metal ready to be fired. Which is already absurd but this is what we witness so let's keep going. Now we have the essential information to make the final calculation on just how powerful this weapon truly is. Here we could use the relativistic kinetic energy calculator which takes into account how mass increases the closer to the speed of light you get but again we're only dealing with 1.3% to the speed of light so the mass increase is more or less negligible at these scales so just a standard kinetic energy calculator is sufficient. We input the simple details that we've accumulated here and we get the final kinetic energy of the impact where energy is equal to 1 times 10 to the power of 25 joules. Or, converting it into something a little bit more familiar, 2.6 million gigatons. This amount of energy is absolute insanity. This is the equivalent of 50 million SAR bombers. But even that doesn't really put into context the level of energy output we're dealing with here. Chicxulub, the asteroid impact that wiped out the dinosaurs, released approximately the energy of 10 to the 8 megatons of TNT. A single shot from this weapon releases 10 to the 25 megatons of TNT, or about 3% the total output of the sun in one second. We're talking about tens of Chicxulub asteroids. Based on the math and what we observe in game, this weapon should be a planet ender, yet it's fired at capital ships every five seconds. It's pure insanity and is just utterly impractical, so can we figure out the parameters needed to get it into a more believable range? Well, in the description of the capital ship class Reaper, also known as a Sovereign class, it is stated that the main magnetohydrodynamic cannon strikes with a yield of between 130 and 450 kilotons of TNT. Now that is much more believable and apparently it still utterly dwarfs even the main guns of Everest class Alliance Dreadnoughts. The thing is, using the same beam type and time configuration and the same materials, downscaling the beam thickness for even the upper 450 kiloton yield means the beam would end up being 72 microns in thickness, approximately the thickness of a human hair. Something this fine but with this level of power would core straight through a capital ship entirely but then that puts it visually completely out of step with what we actually see on screen. The only option we have left is to assume the nature of the beam itself is incorrect. It is stated on the description of the reverse engineered Thanex cannon upgrade for the Normandy that the cannon fires molten metal which solidifies into a shaped projectile after being fired. If we keep the target energy of 450 kilotons, the velocity of 1.3% the speed of light, but abandon the beam-like appearance of the shot and adopt a projectile instead, we have to also reconsider the 5,500mm bore diameter 
of the Reaper class cannons. Because in order to have a round that has a 5,500mm bore made of the stated materials and at the stated velocity and energy at impact, you end up with a ridiculous coin-like projectile 5.5m in diameter and only 0.68mm in length. So we should probably abandon the bore diameter in favour of a more reasonable sub-caliber formed projectile from the molten metal slurry that has been stated. If we do this, we can deduce that the beam of molten iron, uranium and tungsten form into a projectile with a 6.35 centimetre radius and a length of 1.27 metres via extremely powerful electromagnetic fields and impacts a target at 1.3% the speed of light for an energy of 450 kilotons of TNT. This seems much more reasonable than the original calculation of a beam of molten metal 5.5 meters across and nearly 4,000 kilometers in length impacting with a force of tens of dinosaur killing asteroids, don't you think? But it also means our final conclusion doesn't match up visually to what we see in the cutscenes. Now, normally I'd suggest that perhaps we're seeing ionization and ablative plasma from the round impacting particles in space during transit, and that's what gives it its beam-like appearance, or that it's travelling so fast that the black body radiation the round gives off appears to onlookers like a beam of energy. But then even the sound design of these weapons disagree with this hypothesis due to the sustained buzz that emanates from the Reaper during firing. If we don't suspend our disbelief and agree that sound can't travel through space and thus the sound we hear of these weapons firing actually doesn't exist, then it removes that problem and both prior explanations then make sense. In either case, what are your thoughts? Should we accept what we see visually on screen and conclude that this weapon could cut a planet in half with a beam of cosmic levels of power? Or do we accept that perhaps the beams form into a much, much smaller projectile and impacts with reasonable power, but that the visual and auditory appearance of the weapons being fired are at odds with the reality? Or, in my humble opinion, the best option is that we ignore the auditory evidence of this weapon and agree that it is just a very small projectile and that its beam-like appearance is simply due to black body radiation and our humble inability to process things happening at those speeds. Pop your comments down below, and until next time, I'm Installation00, and this is my favourite YouTube channel on the Citadel. Well, bang, okay? Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to tap that like button. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Pop a comment down below on things you'd like me to cover in the future, or any thoughts on today's video. I'll just quickly take this opportunity to thank my patrons and YouTube supporters. Falcon X 3 the singular, Contender Class Ancilla. Laser and Spartan 0137, two of the Triumvirate of Mines within the Metarch of my installation. My installation's monitors, Shane, Orion, Spartan 1029, 121 Esoteric Site, Ashley and Sylvia. The crash of sub-monitors, Legion, Ryan, Lebrat, Element Zero, J3, Mr. Keys, Gunslinger Cult, Evermore's, Personal Devil, Scion Esports, Phantasma, and Tony. My fleet of Strato Sentinels. My most loyal of enforcers. And every single one of the awesome individuals helping to support the channel over on Patreon. It really does help and allows me to keep doing what I do, and I can't thank you all enough. Huge shout to my tier 0 transcendent YouTube members Balaz, Jimbo and Mori. Thank you for continuing to stand sentry over my installation from all threats metaphysical. And if you would like to help support the channel in a more visceral way, consider jumping aboard as a YouTube member or patron to earn tons of perks, merch and goodies along the way. Thank you again for watching, take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain.